Alright, let's try this again. There we go. Alright. And of course the volume is really loud. Alright, we are streaming. Hello and welcome to This Date in History, a.k.a. TDH. This show is all about the events that occurred today and years past, both recognized by actual historians, but mainly things that we personally find intriguing enough for us to bring to you. The sources of this information come from the smart device application Today in History. Historical calendar. And, uh, what happened? Uh, oh, yeah, Today in History, what happened today in history? His thing. And the website on this day.com. Sorry, without a script, I'm pretty much uh, brain dead. For links to those sources, the music, and anything else we gather throughout the show, check the uh, the underbar, the box, the description, whatever it is. Uh, I am, of course, A.O. Xander. I am Lunk. And you are you. T today is uh, Freya's Day, also known as Friday, March 4th, 2022. Why don't you start us off today with uh, Mr. Ultimate Neckbeard. Sure. In 51, Nero, later to become Roman Empress, given the title Principess, Adventurous, Head of the Youth, Adventurous. Yeah. And the reason why we call this guy the leader of all neckbeards is he literally had a neckbeard. I mean, that's... That that just looks itchy, dude. Like, eh. Look at that. God. Anyway, jumping it up to the year 306, martyrdom of St. Adrian of Nicomedia occurred. So I guess they just uh, they made them a martyr. Cool. Yo, that picture looks like... Zuckerberg. It does, kind of. Zuckerberg? Or, or yeah, it looks like Zuckerberg. Nero looks like Zuckerberg. Maybe Nero is Zuckerberg. Yeah, he really does, dude. That's kind of creepy. Wow. Maybe Zuckerberg is Nero. <laughs> Who knows? Also, 852. Uh, Croatian knee. Premier, it the first issued a statue, a document which the first known written mention of the Croats name in Croatia sources. Interesting. Jumping up to 938, the translation of the relics of martyr Wenceslas the first, Duke of Bohemia, Prince of the Czechs, occurred. All right, they translated some people's old manuscripts. That's cool. So, 1152, Frederick the First Barbosa is elected king of Germany. Nice. Moving on up to 1238, the Battle of the Sit River was fought in the northern part of the present-day Yaroslavl uh, Oblast of Russia between the Mongol hordes of Batu Khan and the Russians under Yuri II of Vladimir Suzdal during the Mongol invasion of Russia. Damn. Mm. In 1351... Robin Baldy becomes the king of Siam. Oh yeah, the king of Siam. The king and I. The I and the king. Yeah. There is an I and king. In 1386, Wladyslaw the second Jagello or Jogaila was crowned king of Poland. Damn. Also in 1461, wars of the Rose, Rose of England, Lancastrian King Henry the Sixth is deposed by House of York, cousin who becomes King Edward the Fourth. Oh dang! Moving on up to 1493, explorer Christopher Columbus arrived back in Lisbon, Portugal, aboard his ship Nina from his voyage of what are now the Bahamas and other islands in the Caribbean. Hmm. Yep. Oh. So, in 1519, Hernan Cortez arrived in Mexico in search of the Aztec civilization and its wealth. Dang. Moving on up to 1628, the Massachusetts Bay Colony was granted a royal charter. What is a royal charter? Let me look that up real quick. Royal charter. 
uh, is a formal grant issued by a monarch under royal prerogative as letters patent. Historically, they have been used to promulgate public laws, the most famous example being English something or other. I'm going to post this uh, link in the underbar. Uh, yeah, English Magna Carta of 1215, but since the 14th century have only been used in place of private acts to grant right or power to an individual or a body corporate. They were and still are used to establish significant organizations such as boroughs with multiple charters, universities, and learned societies. Interesting. Gotta add that to the underbar here. You okay? Yes. Yes. I can hear you breathing. Oh, that means I'm alive. Oh, uh, that's good. Also, in, uh... Yeah, what? Well, 1665? 1665, English King Charles II declares war on the Netherlands, marking the start of the Second Anglo-Dutch War. Dang. Those mm -hmm. Europeans are always at each other's throats. Well, yeah. then again, everybody is. Uh, ten years later, in 1675, John Flamsteed was appointed the first Astronomer Royal of England. Ah. Damn. Yeah. Also, in 1611, Charles II grants a land chartered to William Penn for the area that will be later known as Pennsylvania. Well, that, that makes sense. Uh, named after him, Penn, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Huh. Yep, I've learned that in social studies, too. Huh. In 1776, during the American Revolution, the Continental Army fortified Dorchester Heights with cannon, leading the British troops to abandon the siege of Boston. Which I learned something new about the revolution uh, yesterday. That uh, we invaded the Bahamas. That was really interesting. You yeah. Know, you'd think that we'd focus more on defense rather than offense, but, you know, as Patton said, a good off a good defense is a better offense, you know? Yeah, and Patton knew what you were talking about because he had a pipe in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, well, so did MacArthur. He had a bigger pipe. <laughs> Your pipe already you knows uh, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> what happened in 1789? In 1789? Wait, wait, 89? 1789. Yeah, 17, 1789. Uh, in New York City, the first Congress of the United States meets putting the United States Constitution in effect. Yep. There we go. That's, that's when we actually were the United States, more or less officially. But it still took like another five to ten years to really solidify everything. So it's not yeah, easy. Yeah, we needed some rules, you know. Yeah. One year later, in 1790, France divided into 83 departments, cutting across the former provinces in an attempt to dislodge regional loyalties based on ownership of land by the nobility. Right, getting out of the. Uh, um, uh, Whatever, kingdom, crap, I don't know, uh, monarchy type of system. What happened uh, one year later? One year later, 1971, Vermont is admitted to the United States as the 14th state. Uh, I think that was 1791, not 1991. Well, oh, yeah, 1791. Yeah. Also in 1791, the Constitutional Act of 1791 was introduced by the British House of Commons in London, which investigated the separation of Canada into Lower Canada, known as Quebec, and Upper Canada, known as Ontario. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And in 1794, well, 1794, the 11th Amendment to the United States Constitution was passed by the Congress. Interesting. What was the 11th Amendment? Let me look that up real quick. The 11th Amendment, the judicial power of the United States shall not be uh, construed to extend to any suit in law or equity commenced or prosecuted against one of the United States by citizens of another state or by citizens or subjects of any foreign state. Uh, I have no idea what that means. So if anybody, uh, if anybody is a constitutionalist, 
Please educate me. Uh, let's see here. That's uh, four, three years later in 1797, John Adams was inaugurated as the second president of the United States of America, becoming the first president to begin his presidency on March 4th. Oh, that's right. Yeah, today is the, uh, the, uh, is it Mar was it March 4th or was it March 20th? No, it's well, March, I think March 4th. Yeah. March 4th. Yeah, January 20th is what it went into. That's right. So. Yep, also, 1804, Castle Hill Rebellion, Irish Convict Rebel, rebel against British colonial authority in the colonial of New South Wales. Australia. Australia, Mike. Crikey. Uh, let's see here. Nine years later, in the year 1813, Cyril VI of Constantinople was elected Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople. Wait, Cyril? It's Cyril. C Cyril, Cyril. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Uh, the Ecumen yeah. uh, Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople. Um, uh, See, the Ecuma Patriarch is the Archbishop of Constantinople, New Rome, and Primus inter pares among the heads of the several autocephalous churches which compose the Eastern Orthodox Church. The Ecumenical Patriarch is regarded as the representative and spiritual leader of Orthodox Christians worldwide. Whoa. So this guy is like basically the Pope for that religion. Yep, he is. The other bar. Also, in 1814, Americans defeat British forces at the Battle of Longwoods between London, Ontario, and Danville, near present-day Wardsville, Ontario. Nice. And in 1837, the city of Chicago was incorporated. Happy birthday, Chicago. Yeah. Also, 1848... Albert, Carlo Alberto di Salvonio signs the statue to Albertino that will later represent the first constitution of the region of the Italia. Ah. Uh, one year later, or 365 days, however you want to look at it, in 1849, President-elect of the United States Zachary Taylor and Vice President-elect Millard Fillmore did not take their representative Oh, they did not take their respective oaths of office, uh, but they did the next day. This led to the erroneous theory that outgoing President Pro Temori of the United States Senate David Rice Acheson had assumed the role of acting president for one day. Wow. That's pretty pretty interesting. <laughs> yes. Also, the first national flag of the Confederate States of America, the Stars and Bars, is adopted. Stars and bars, that sounds like some military thing. You know? Like, you know how they have the medals, there's stars, and then there's bars, you know? Yeah. Four years later, in 1865, the third and final national flag of the Confederate States of America was adopted by the Confederate Congress. Hmm. Damn. Also, in 1878, Pope Leo XIII reestablishes the Catholic Church in Scotland, recreating sees and naming bishops for the first time since 1603. Dang. So that's that's 275 years. Wow. That's a long time. In 1882, British uh, Britain's first electric trains ran in East London. How cool. Yo, that's awesome. Yeah. Also, 1890. 1890, the longest bridge in Great Britain, the fourth bridge in Scotland, measuring 8,900 feet, or 2,464 meters long, is opened by the Duke of Guadalupe, later King Edward VI, the seventh. Dang, 1890. I have a picture of it up here. I'm trying to find... That's a long bridge. It's an interesting looking bridge, too. It's just like, it looks like they got partially way through it, and then they started with another architecture type. Huh. 
Jumping on up to 1899, Cyclone Mahina swept in north of Cooktown, Queensland, with a 12 meter or 39 foot wave that reached up to 5 kilometers or 3.1 miles inland, killing over 300 people. Jeez. Yes. Also, in 1901, well, William McKinley inaugurated president for the second time, Theodore Roosevelt is the vice president. Cool. Good old Rosie. Seven years later, in 1908, the Collinwood School fire in Collinwood near Cleveland, Ohio, caused the deaths of 174 people. Mm. That's a lot. One year later, in 1909, President Woodrow Wilson, I mean, President William Taft, issued what would become the, come at the tax prefix, a mechanism to avoid the reconstruction of the U.S. Constitution allegedly clause to appoint Philander K. Knox as Secretary of State. Interesting. To avoid the restriction, not reconstruction. Oh, restriction. Yeah. Four years later, in 1913, during the First Balkan War, the Greek army engaged the Turks at Bizani, resulting in victory two days later. Damn. Also in 1913, the United States Department of Labor is formed. Nice. Let me look up this Department of Labor. United States Department of Labor. Where, where did it go? There we go. The United States Department of Labor is one of the executive departments for the U.S. federal government. It is responsible for the administration of federal laws governing occupational safety and health, wage and hour standards, unemployment benefits, reemployment services, and occasionally economic statistics. All right, add that to the other bar. In 1917, the Jeanette Rankin of Montana became the first female member of the United States House of Representatives. Oh, cool. Yes. Also, 1933, oh, yeah, 1933, Frances Perkins becomes the United States Secretary of Labor, the first female member of the United States Cabinet. Nice, dang. So we have a couple of groundbreaking things here. Also 1933, Franklin Delano Roosevelt became the 32nd president of the United States and he was the last president to be inaugurated on March 4th. Oh, cool. Yeah, I think he changed it to January 20th. Yeah, yeah, that's right, because uh, they, they, um, they made the amendment to reduce the amount to a maximum of two terms for a president. Uh, and while they were at it, they changed it from March 4th to Jan to July, to July, January 20th. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the show, Mr. Muffin. Hi there. How you doing? I just want to join the show and say hi very quick. All right, all right. Um, are you able to read something? It, it sounded like you were driving there for a second. Yeah, I am driving. Ah, uh, okay. Mr. Lump, yeah. do you want to take 1933? Uh, this is the and last 1933, one. Yeah, 1933, the Parliament of Austria was suspended due to quibble procedure. Prompting Chancellor Eagleberg Dolphus to initiate the authorian rule by decree. Dang, so essentially he took over. Yes. In 1941, during World War II, the United Kingdom launched Operation Claymore on the Lofton Islands, which was the first large-scale British commando raid. Damn. Also, in 1943, in World War II, the Battle of Barty Campbell's one of the first major battles between the Greek resistance and the occupying Royal Italian Army begins. It ends on the 6th of March with the surrender of the Italian or the entire Italian battalion and the liberation of the town of Rivia. Jeez, the entire battalion. Dang. Also in 1943 and also during World War II, the Battle of the Bismarck Sea in the Southwest Pacific came to an end. I don't want to, I don't want to sound weird, but you know why they probably gave up? Why? They started seeing the Greeks uh, moving up. 
Oh god. That's... I didn't realize they're Greek. Yeah. Spartans! Prepare your breakfast and eat hearty! For tonight we dine in heck! Also, okay, we get the Bismarck. Yeah. In 1944, in World War II, after the sense of the big week, the USAAF begins the day like bombing campaign of Berlin. What is the USAAF, though? Uh, United States Air Force. Oh, no, United, United States... States no, no, that's USAF. USAAF is United States Army Air Forces. So, th okay. this, was not, this was not the Air Force, this was the Army. That's interesting. Eleven years later, in 1954, in order to protect the endangered Siama ring seal, uh, known as Pusa Hispida Siamensis, was legalized. Good. Yeah. I can see Muffin trying not to laugh at these weird names. You and your trucker hat. I'm gonna say, you wanna laugh at something? <laughs> you wanna laugh at something? Look in a mirror. <laughs> yeah. Also, it's one joke. Uh, three seals went up clubbing. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Jumping up to 1957, the S&P 500 stock market index was introduced, replacing the S&P 90. Hmm. Damn. Also, in 1960, the French freighter La Cabrera explodes in Havana, Cuba, still at 100. Jeez. Two years later, in 1962, a Caledonian Airways Douglas DC crashed shortly after takeoff from Cameroon, killing 111 people. And this was the worst crash for a DC-7. Ooh. Yeah. Also, in uh, 1966, a Canadian Pacific Airline DC-8-4 explodes on land in at Tokyo International Airport, killing 64 people. Jeez. Also in 1966, in an interview in the London Evening Standard, the Beatles' John Lennon declares that the band is, quote, more popular than Jesus now, end quote. And that's when uh, they started to decline. You know, once you start claiming yeah. yourself as more popular than God, then nope. you gotta check your nope. ego, bro. Yep. Oh, God. Okay, first, in 1970, French submarine Euro dice explodes underwater, resulting in the loss of the entire 57 man crew. Jeez, man. It's not good. Six years later, in 1976, the Northern Ireland Constitutional Convention was formally dissolved in Northern Ireland, resulting in direct rule of Northern Ireland from London by the British Parliament. Yeah. I demand a free Irish state. I said Irish state, not Irish steak. I said state. That's a steak. Ah. Uh, well, that sound. That sounds pretty good. I'd like a steak right now. <laughs> Give me a nice filet mignon. Cook it till it's nice and crispy. Well done. Drown it in A1 sauce. That's good eating. And... <laughs> also, 19... In 1977, the 1977 Varaka earthquake in Eastern and Southern Europe kills more than 1,500, mostly in Burtes, Romania. Yeah, Bucharest. 1,500 people died from that. Jesus. That's a horrible loss of life with an earthquake. Yeah. You know, what was the deadliest, deadliest earthquake? Let me see here. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, that's right. We reported on that earlier. Uh, the 830,000, uh, the, the, the Shanxi, China, in 1556. It was a magnitude 8. Yeah, more than 97 counties in China were affected. A 520 mile wide area was destroyed. In some counties, it is estimated that up to 60% of the population died. Such catastrophic losses are attributed to Le to, Lo uh, to Loess's cave settlements, which collapsed as a result. Okay, well, maybe we shouldn't live in caves. Jumping on up to 1980, Nationalist leader Robert Mugwab... 
Mugabe won a sweeping election victory to become Zimbabwe's first black prime minister. Cool. Yes. Also, in 1985, the Food and Drug Administration approves a blood test for HIV infection use since then the, for the screening of all blood donations in the United States. Wow. One year later, in 1986, the Soviet Vega-1 began, yeah, began returning images of Halley's Comet and the first images of its nucleus. Dang. One second, let me, let me look that up. 1986... Haley's Comets Images Huh Ooh It's an asteroid By the way uh, Remind me after the show I gotta show you There's a meteor heading towards Babylon Anyway what happened in 1990 In 1990 the American basketball player Hank Gathers dies after collapsing during the semifinals of a West Coast Conference tournament game. Oh no. Yeah, I, wow, what happened? Like, Hank Gathers. What happened to Hank Gathers? Uh, yeah, let's see here. He was pronounced dead, blah, blah, blah. To autopsy found he died of. Cardiomyopathy, a heart muscle disorder. Oh, okay. Well, that sucks. Four years later, in 1994, during the space shuttle program, the space shuttle Columbia was launched on mission STS-62. Mr. Lunk? Yeah. 1996? In 1996, a derailed train in... West away is Waga, Wisconsin. Uh, it caused the emergency evacuation of 2,300 people for 16 days. Let me look this up. This sounds like a chemical leak. Stop it. Okay. Uh, let's see here. It's, uh, what happened? Oh, it's a fire. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, the derailed train was carrying a large quantity of hazardous material, which immediately caught fire. The fire, which involved the train cars and an adjacent feed mill, burned for more than two weeks after the actual derailment, resulting in the emergency evacuation of 2,300 people for 18 days, including the entire city of Weyowagwega, with about 1,700 evacuees. Wow. That's a disaster. Two years later, in 1998, on Kale vs. Sundowner Offshore Services, Inc., the Supreme Court of the United States ruled that federal laws banning on-the-job sexual harassment also applied when both parties are the same sex. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yep. That's basically making, like, uh, making homosexual uh, um, harassments illegal, which, you know, should be illegal. You know, any form of sexual harassment should be non-tolerated. Yeah, right. So. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mr. Lunk, what happened in 2001? Yeah. In 2001, the BBC bombing a massive car bomb explodes in front of the BBC Television Central in London. There's the injuring one person. The attack was attributed to the real in our IRA. Oh wow, so now we have multiple IRAs going on. One year later in 2002, seven uh, U.S. Special Forces uh, or Special Operations Forces soldiers and 200 Al-Qaeda fighters were killed as U.S. forces attempt to infiltrate the Shah Ikat Valley on a low-flying helicopter reconnaissance mission. Was that Black Hawk Down? No. Black Hawk Down was well, wait. before. Yeah, after that was in Somalia. Uh, okay. What happened in 2009? Go ahead. Okay, in 2009, the International Criminal Court issued an arrest warrant for Sudanese President Omar 
Hassan al Basia for war crimes and crimes against humanity in Darfur. Al Basin is the first sitting head of state to be indicted by the ICC since the establishment in 2002. Oh, yeah. Dang. Uh, three years later, in 2012, a series of explosions was reported at a munitions dump in Brazzaville, the capital of the Republic of the Congo, causing the deaths of at least 250 people. Ooh. As I said, don't live near ammo dumps, you know? Okay. Also, in 2015, at least 34 miners died in a suspected gas explosion in the the Adaku coal mine in the rebel-held Gontik region of Ukraine. Mm. Moving on up to 2018, former MI6 spy Sergei Skripal and his daughter were poisoned with a Novichok nerve agent in Salisbury, England, resulting in a diplomatic uproar causing mass expulsions of diplomats from all countries involved. See, this is why we can't have nice things, everybody. You gotta play well. Share your toys, bro. Come on. Not, I would not, like not all What muffin? Not all toys. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> You're right, muffin. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say something really gay, but I'm not going to. <clears throat> uh, see here. Uh, you get to close us out with the main body here, Mr. Lunk. Yeah. And also, in 2002... 2020. Well, 2020, Nick Wonderland, again, becomes the first pre person to walk over the Masar Volcano in Nicaragua. Why would you want to walk over a volcano? I, some people have... Some people are thrill seekers that need that rush. Now, was this like a tightrope thing, or did they just walk over... Let me see here. Yeah, it was a tightrope. So they put a tightrope over a vol Wow. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, that's not fair. He has tethered. He was tethered. That's not fair. Okay, well, screw yeah, that unlike, guy, coward. Unlike the French guy who tightroped across the Twin Towers and even laid down on the fucking wire. Yeah. Wait, didn't he and his mom, like, uh, like, cross paths and then go around each other or something? Or is that a different one? That's a different person. Okay. Uh, any articles intrigue you today? Uh, all the inauguration. Uh, yes. I was going to say, uh, the multiple times there's, like, the first female in, like, you know, a political position. That too. Yeah. Both are really. Uh-huh. I'm going to have to go over the, the script real quick. Like later on to, to figure out what I'm going to name this show. But anyway, let's get into births and deaths. Starting us off in 895, we have Liu Zihuan, the founder of the later Han Dynasty. Mm. Also, 1523, Henry Carey, first Baron Hudson. 1651, we have John Somers, first Baron Somers. He was an English lawyer, jur jurist, and politician who was a Lord High Chancellor of Great Britain. Yeah. Also in 1706, we have Laurent A. Troll, Danish architect who designed the Hermitage Hunting Lodge and Gamal Hogarth. I want to check these building out. The Hunting Lodge looks pretty cool. It looks like a interesting building. I don't know why, I just like it. It's really boxy, really fancy. What does this uh, gamble hold card look like? Oh, okay, it's a it's a it's a house. It's a cool house. Interesting. I love architecture. 1719. We have George Pignot, uh, the first Baron Pignot. He was an English politician. Yep. Also in. 1760? 17, 1760, you have Hugh Ronald, British nurseryman who cultivated and documented 300 varieties of apples. I had no idea there were that many apples. Yes, there are. Let me look. How many varieties? 
uh, here we go, varieties of apples. There are... There are over 7,500 varieties of apples in existence throughout the world, 2,500 which are grown in the United States. Why are there so many types of apples? That's way too many apples. 7,500? Jesus Christ. You know, there's a such thing called a muffin apple that has maple syrup inside as well. <laughs> I'm gonna have to try that. Uh, who? It's my turn, right? Or your turn? My turn. 1769. We have Muhammad Ali, an Ottoman military leader, and Pasha. What? What was a Pasha? Let me look that up real quick. Uh, Pasha or Pasha. In older works, sometimes uh, angelicized as Basha, was a higher rank in the Ottoman political and military system, typically granted uh, to governors, generals, dignitaries, and others. Interesting. Add this to the underbar. Where yeah. did my underbar go? It's not my underbar. Which one? This one. Here we go. What happened in... Uh, who was born in 1781? 17... Wait, 1781. Okay. Yeah. In 1781, we have Rebecca Guest, U.S. educator and philanthropist. Uh, wasn't a U.S. yet, American. Uh, 1781 was, we were not U.S. yet. So. Yeah. Yeah. Gretz, you know, Rebecca Gretz. Gretz, you know, I don't know. 1792, we have Isaac Lear, uh, American consologist, geologist, and publisher. What is a consologist? Somebody who... Somebody who listens to the almighty conch? Consology is a study of mollusk shells. Consology is one, of, is one aspect of malacology, the study of mollusks. However, malacology is a study of mollusks as whole organisms, whereas consology is confined to the study of their shells. So I was right. It, it really There really is a science in studying Snail shells. <laughs> what the hell? Do people have nothing better to do with their lives? Really? Like, I'm going to study this shell and become a, an expert on consology. Who was born in 1814? 1814, Napoleon Collins, rear admiral of the United States Navy during the Mexi U.S.-Mexican War and the American Civil War. Dang. Admiral for two wars. 1815, we have Mykhailo Verbisky, Ukrainian composer of religious hymns and the national anthem of Ukraine. Muffin, are you having a stroke? I'm, I'm watching you. No, I'm just happy. <laughs> oh, I'm so. By myself, way around here. Ah. Also, uh, 1826, August, Johann Gottfried Feierstein, German linguist, anthrographer, and theologian. What is an ethnographer? Let me check that out here. Uh, an ethnographer is a person who studies and describes the culture of a particular society or group. All right. Interesting. 1826 as well, we have Theodore Judah, a U.S. engineer who founded the Central Pacific Railroad. Mm. That's, that's okay. what linked the west to the east, I think. I don't know. Also, in 1851, we have Alexandros Alba Demetrius, Greek archer and poet. Then in 1863, we have R.I. Pocock, an English zoologist and archaeologist. And in 1876, we have Jacob L. Hart, U.S. activist who founded the Spirit Fruit Society. And it was 1867, not 76. Well, 1867. Yeah. Then, in 1893, we have Charles Herbert Colvin, a U.S. engineer who co-founded the Pioneer Instrument Company. In 1901, we have Wilbur R. Franks, Canadian scientist who invented the G-suit. What is the G-suit? 
I think it's a gravity suit or something. Uh, oh, a G-suit or anti-G-suit is a flight suit worn by aviators and astronauts who are subject to high levels of acceleration force. Alright, so it is a gravitational suit. I, I, I suspect it's like skin tight so that way you don't like peel away from yourself. 1906, we have Avery Fisher, a U.S. violinist and engineer who founded Fisher Electronics. Oh, Fisher Price stuff? I don't think so. I don't think Fisher Electronics is Fisher Price, but let me let me check. Fisher Electronics was an American audio equipment manufacturer found in 1945 by Avery Fisher in New York City, New York. Uh, originally, um, the company and the name was bought by Japanese electronics conglomerate Sanyo in 1975. Never mind. Yeah. Also, in 1960, Ernest Chatterton, British Australian nuclear physicist. Mm. 1926, we have Richard DeVos, a U.S. businessman and philanthropist who co founded Amway. Wow. And in 1928, we have Alan Silto, English novelist, short story writer, essayist, and poet. 1931, we have Bob Johnson, a U.S. ice hockey player and coach. Talk about the most generic name in all of the world, Bob Johnson. Like, you know, that, that's almost like John Smith or Jane Doe, you know? John Bob Smith. What about man. Dick Johnson? <laughs> Bob Smith. His name is twice the dick. Oh, dick man. Johnson. Wow. <laughs> Also, in uh, 1941, we have John Hancock, U.S. film and television actor. Yep. 365 days later, in 1942, Dave Matthews was born. He was a U.S. keyboard player and composer. I think he was the guy Dave Matthews band, you know? Yes, it is. Yes, he is. And in 1972, we have Ivy Queen Porter. A Puerto Rican singer, songwriter, rapper, actress, and record producer. Dang, that's a lot of uh, things to do. 1983, we have Adam Deacon, an English film actor, rapper, writer, and director. Yeah, go found it. Oh, in 1986, we have Mike Krieger, Brazilian U.S. computer programmer and businessman who co founded Instagram. Yeah. So there you go, Muffin, that site that you keep posting links to, like with that video of the Muffin Man. That, that's the founder, well, co-founder at least. Anyway, that wraps up the burst. Let's get into dust here. Why don't you start us off with 306? Yes. 306, Adrian and Natalia of Nicodema, Christian Martyrs. Ah. 1193, Saladin, the founder of the Ayyubad Sultanate. Saladin. Oh, Saladin. He, he was something. Yeah, Saladin was awesome. He, like, despite practicing a, uh, a violent and hateful religion, he was very kind to, to people he came across. Also, 1807, Abraham Baldwin, U.S. minister, lawyer, and politician. Is he related to the Baldwin actor? Baldwin? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, before I look that up, though, uh, we missed one. In 1793, we have Louis Jean Marie de Bourbon, the Duke of Penthievray. Let me let me check up uh, this guy, Baldwin. In 1852, we have Nikolai Kugal, Ukrainian Russian short story writer, novelist, and playwright. Interesting. Uh, well, it's asking me to accept cookies. I don't accept cookies. Here we go, Abraham uh, Baldwin. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to look this up, but if anybody's interested and you want to post a comment, feel free. I don't care enough about the Baldwin brothers to know about their lineage. I'm just wondering if he was uh, related to them, you know? Hey. hey, you know how you said about accepting cookies? Yeah. Your mom was so dumb, she broke the computer to try to find the cookies. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's not the, that's not the cookie jar. Okay, also, in, uh, 15, well, 1858, Matthew C. Perry, U.S. Naval Commander. 
Yeah. When I saw that name, the first thing I thought of was Harold and Kumar and calling that guy a Matthew Perry looking mofo. You know, this is the wrong Matthew Perry. <laughs> yeah. In 1983, we have Alexander H. Stevens, an American lawyer and politician who was the vice president of the Confederate States of America. Ooh. Also, in 1915, we have William Willis, English inventor who founded British Summertime. What is British Summertime? Does British yeah, even have a summer? British, yeah, uh, before British Summertime, it was constant fucking winter. Yeah, um, well, I guess it's just uh, it's just a time zone. Right now, it's 9:49 p.m. In I know, Britain. I know. Yeah, I know. I had to make a joke before <laughs> before that. Britain was in constant winter. <laughs> 1925. We have John Montgomery Ward's U.S. baseball player and manager. And in 1940, we have Hamilton Garland, U.S. novelist, poet, essayist, story writer. 1944, we have uh, Louis or Louis Capone, Italian U.S. gangster. Let me see if he's related to Al. Uh, Louis Capone. Uh, Al Capone. Yeah. Let's see here. Uh, he was not related to Al Capone. Okay. So. Thank God. Also, in 1972, Harold Barrowclough, you, I mean, New Zealand general lawyer and politician who was the eighth chief justice of the New Zealand. Yep. Sure. 1977, wow. Luz, uh, Lutz Graf Schwerin von Kroske died today, 1977. He was a German jurist and politician who was a German minister for foreign affairs. Aww. Uh, we have... Three back-to-back -back awesome people. Yeah. In 1994, we have John Candy, Canadian comedian actor. Make God laugh, John Candy. Yeah. Well, uh, John Panett, George Carlin, um, yeah, uh, are also up there with them, as well as uh, and Chris Farley, Chris Farley, Ralphie May. You know, all the good ones. Yeah, God's laughing his ass off. <laughs> right now. 1996, Minnie Pearl was a U.S. entertainer. Yep. Also, 2008, Gary Gygax, U.S. game designer who co-created Dungeons and Dragons. Yep. Roll a 20 for <laughs> Gary. Yeah. Roll a 20. Just don't roll don't a roll a nat one. That's not good. In 2010, we have Raymond Abraham, an Austrian architect and educator who designed the Austrian Cultural Forum in New York. Let me look that up real quick. Images. Oh, oh, that's a cool building. Huh. That's really cool. Okay. Also, 2010, we have Vladislav Albazina. Abek is an historian and politician who was the first president of Abek is Nice. 2013, Lillian Khan. Khan! Hungarian U.S. businesswoman who co-founded Coach Inc. Also, 2013, we have Torin Smith, Canadian businessman who founded Studio Proteus. And in 2019, Luke Perry, a U.S. actor. Yeah. And that concludes the show. Sorry, go ahead. He was in Beverly Hills, now one two one zero. Ah, wasn't he also? Uh, didn't he make a cameo in uh, in Johnny Bravo? Yes, he did. Ah, and he that did, Perry did. Man, man, Perry did also. Donny Osmond. Donny Osmond. Ah. Yeah. All right, third time's a charm. That concludes the show. Once again, check the underbar for any links you may be interested, which also include... Logan TV on Twitch. Yep, go check them out. And I'm not sure if anybody's noticed, but there's a section there called the Omni Coalition, and that is what we are now. Uh, we are going to be, at some point, I'm not entirely sure, we're going to switch our streaming services onto Rumble. So go check that out. We're still going to be uploading onto all of our other sites, which includes, you know, Rumble, YouTube, uh, and BitChute. 
as well as this channel, but we are trying to move over because it's no longer just my channel. This is a group project, so I'm moving us over. Anyway, for your dose of past events uh, daily, we stream uh, every day, uh, mostly around noon Pacific time, which is... What time, Monk? 3 p well, 2 p.m. for me right now. What time zone are you in? Central. Uh, yes. Any other time zones, uh, do your own math, you know. Anyway, for all of you and all of us, I am A.O. Xander. Dr. Long. And you are you. Don't forget to look right and left at every intersection, rate five thumbs, and subscribe. Until tomorrow, you'll see us then. Toodles. Scope Brandon. Scope Brandon.